Today's video is brought to you by Audible. Happy Hobbit Day! September 22nd is Hobbit Day for those of you who didn't know. We like to celebrate this day as it is the day of the birthdays of our Frodo and Bilbo Bagginses. It is a great opportunity for us Tolkien YouTubers to come together and collaborate in a playlist to celebrate all things Tolkien, and that is no different this year. So, once you've enjoyed this video, at least hopefully of course, please go check out the other entries too. Everyone has put in a great effort to what they have made and they are all worth checking out. But before I ramble too long like Bilbo himself, let's roll the… So hello everyone and welcome to the Broken Sword. Today we are going to look at the Scouring of the Shire, an important chapter of the Lord of the Rings and one of the major cuts to the popular film trilogy. Why was the chapter cut? Should it have really been kept? Well, that's what we hope to look at today. To demonstrate what makes it so important, we need to give as brief an account as possible of the events which comprise the chapter and the characters and events which take place therein. One of the reasons it might have been cut from the popular Peter Jackson adaptation Return of the King was because of what was seen as a film which already had an ending, or more than enough endings as a matter of fact. The producers and directors might have thought that adding on to that might have led to further pacing issues, or that it may have punctuated the film in a way that did not work on screen. It is possible that the writers and director did not know how to properly incorporate the chapter, despite its great importance to Tolkien and to the story as he saw it. For Tolkien, a professor and linguist with a vast knowledge of myth and legend, this piece of the story is part of the hero's journey. That of returning home. To find your home has changed, or that, because you have changed so much, it no longer looks the same. Now, let us pause for a moment to have a chat about Audible. They have such an awesome feature right now where you can listen to The Lord of the Rings, The Fellowship of the Ring for free until the 13th of October on Alexa in the US and Canada. Why not immerse yourself back into Middle-earth with Andy Serkis at the wheel and relive the epic adventure of Frodo and the One Ring? I mean, I certainly will never turn down a 111th listen to this story. All you need to do is say, Alexa, read The Lord of the Rings Book 1, or The Fellowship of the Ring, or even just ask Alexa what's free from Audible to bring Middle-earth into your room. I love having my membership to Audible. I consider it so valuable right now with the great chances to discover new worlds, new favourites or even just a new podcast. It is a great help in listening to everything from Christopher Lee's The Children of Hurin to Andy Serkis's perfect rendition of The Lord of the Rings. These kind of things definitely help with pronunciations that I'm not sure about for example, and let's just say that if you've watched me for a while you understand there may be a few of those. So, get ready for The Rings of Power on Prime Video, Alexa customers can listen to The Lord of the Rings The Fellowship of the Ring audiobook on Alexa free for 60 days from the 15th of August up until the 13th of October. Just say, Alexa read The Fellowship of the Ring and Audible is your go to for The Lord of the Rings book 1, now available free on Alexa through to October 13th. The scouring of the Shire had to be important to Tolkien, as he was once at the front of the world at war as an officer in the English army during the First World War. Though he has been adamant that his work is not allegorical, it is easy to see the application to his own experiences. As Tolkien said, what some mistake for allegory is mere applicability, so the return from the front, coming back to his home to see the changes, the scarred earth the long stares on the faces of his comrades at arms, this had to profoundly affect our author. As going to war has always been a sadness in human life, Tolkien turned that sadness of his own life into a place that was seemingly untouchable by war. Only it wasn't untouchable. The scouring of the Shire is the war coming home, to touch what we love the most with its hands of flame and destruction. Throughout the War of the Ring, our heroes from the Shire often thought back of home. In their minds, it was an idealised, perfect slice of Eden. It was untouchable by the forces of evil which swept over the rest of Middle-earth. 
The scouring of the Shire brings the horror and reality of war home to our returning heroes in a way the film fails to capture. Instead, the Shire has been turned into a police state, an industrial wasteland with food shortages at the mercy of a small group of speculators who began buying up property shortly after Frodo set out to destroy the ring. In the story, the prelude to the return home would see Aragorn named King of the Reunited Kingdoms of Arnor and Gondor, poised to preside over decades of peace, returning to the city that he had once defended as a common man now as the undisputed king is a nice touch. But Aragorn, King Elisar, must too rebuild his lands, put to right what has brought low during the War of the Ring. We can envision many repairs to homes and steadfasts, forts and shelters throughout the war-torn Middle-earth, all of them needing the touch of a king who is prepared to do the work and serve his people righteously. For Aragorn, to come home means rebuilding what his realm would come to be, and the same is true for the hobbits as they approach the Brandywine Bridge. At the Brandywine Bridge, they find a spiked gate, closed off and a frightened gatekeeper on the other side under orders from the chief of Bag End, one of Frodo's more greedy relatives. Merry and Pippin scale the gate and the four hobbits set out for Hobbiton. That's when they encounter a group of hobbit sheriffs, who try to put them under arrest, but the four hobbits only laugh and move on, but a sheriff warns Samwise that the chief has many in his service. After their encounter with the sheriffs, Frodo and Sam and Merry and Pippin find a group of hobbits who do not answer to Lotho the Hobbit Chief, but to another, more mysterious figure, one named Sharky. Frodo is threatened and the others draw their blades. The men turn to flee, and Sam rides on to find the oldest hobbit in the region, Tom Cotton. Farmer Cotton and his sons gather the village's freedom fighters and prepare for battle when the band of men return, though they surrender after a brief fight. Here's where Farmer Cotton gives us some explanation on how things changed in Hobbiton after Sam and Frodo left. It was then that Lotho started purchasing farmland, which caused a food shortage in Hobbiton, and that then, a gang of men from the south took over the town. The following morning, a hundred men approached Hobbiton while Pippin arrives with his relatives and a great battle commences. Seventy men would be killed in this battle, the Battle of Bywater, along with nineteen hobbits, with thirty also being wounded. It is a fight that would be remembered ever after. The companions continue on to Bag End to handle the new chief, the last to stand in their way of returning to their home as it was. To the surprise of everyone, they find Saruman, at the gate of Bag End. He is the mysterious Sharky, and he pronounced a curse on the Shire if anyone should bring harm to him. Frodo convinces his friends that Saruman has no such power, but they are not allowed to kill the wizard. This would have remained so had Saruman not tried to stab Frodo, only for the armour that he wore to shield Frodo from this attack. But despite this, Frodo again shows mercy. This mercy is patronising to Saruman, and this leaves him enraged. Frodo learns that Wormtongue killed Lotho in his sleep, which does not sit well with Wormtongue as he protests that he only did so at the command of the wizard, which in turn sees Wormtongue stab Saruman, killing him, attempting to flee, but he is then brought down by hobbit arrows and killed. Saruman's corpse burns to ash, and a grey mist blows away in the wind. For a moment that mist had risen and looked west, but as though with the breath of the Valar he was told he could not return home. But for the hobbits, home is saved. Hope has brought them through, but home will never quite be the same again. The Shire's ruffian based power structure fell, and the hobbits rebuilt the villages damaged throughout the region. Sam uses the silver seed of a Malon tree given to him by none other than Galadriel, and he plants it in the party field where the sacred tree springs up and replaces the old one that had been torn down. Merry and Pippin are heroes, but Frodo is suffering what might be early stages of post-traumatic stress disorder. Sam would go on to marry Rosie, Farmer Cotton's daughter, 
They live for a time with Frodo at Bag End, until Frodo leaves for the Grey Havens and he reminds us of the hard decision that he had to make. It must often be so, Sam, when things are in danger. Someone has to give them up, lose them, so that others may keep them. So with that brief overview of the events that took place within the chapter, and I will admit there were some things missed out, but that's more just for a general idea, we will come back to it now. The question of its importance, and essentially how it was famously cut from the popular film trilogy, which did so much right in its translation to the screen. There are potentially a few problems with the transition, and key among them for yours truly is the change in Frodo, to a more meek and passive character than his literary counterpart. But the omission of the scouring of the Shire is not one of those, at least for us. It is a treat to find more to the story you love if you come back to the book afterwards. This look at how fragile peace can be when the world at large is at war seemed to be Tolkien's own way of rebuilding his own. Whether it was through catharsis and fiction, or coming to terms with his own actions through the deeds of his characters. Tolkien was a deeply insightful and thoughtful man and his thoughtfulness shines through time after time throughout his works. While we do not think cutting Tom Bombadil from the films was such a bad move, some characters just don't translate well to the screen. But the scouring of the Shire is an entirely different story, and less understandable to see on the cutting room floor. The scouring of the Shire shows the true horrors of war, that once the bad guys are defeated, the world can never go on as it had before. The Hobbiton of the days before the war, where Gandalf delighted all with his magical firework displays, is a Hobbiton that no longer truly exists. True, the Malon tree grows large and bright, and the industrialised smog and pollution goes away, but it's easy to see hints at the disrepair of the Great Mill. In Tolkien's lifetime, it had fallen into ruin, and held on as a relic from a better, if forgotten, age. He put his own funds into restoring it, and with the Shire he put his blood, sweat and tears into restoring that. The cost of war is deeper than that, it damages the mind and body, and its soul and lands of the Shire were marred by Saruman's presence, by the murder taking place there. It is a loss of innocence, a loss of childhood that begets the very painful process of growing up and meeting the evils of the outside world head on for our hero. There is more to the scouring of the Shire than Tolkien's own experiences at war, but his experiences as a professor of languages and literature. If you have not heard of the monomyth, it's also known by the hero's journey. This is a term that examines the stages of a hero's journey, who goes on an adventure, faces a crisis, wins, and then returns victorious. And it's not hard for one to find the parallels between the whole of the Lord of the Rings and the hero's journey from the call to adventure all the way to the journey into the underworld. The scouring of the Shire is the return home, enlightened, with our hero seeing home in a way that they previously could not have seen it. Their experiences have changed their perspective, and they know, as Frodo does when he realises that he must leave, that Hobbiton and the Shire of the years before the war is gone safe only from the threat of the outside world in their memories, and of course, in ours too. So I guess you could really see it in both ways at the end of the day. Should it have been cut in terms of the story and Frodo's own journey? I don't think so, it is such an important part to the character and it was a shame we never got to see it. I mean, I would never say no to a short TV series on it, maybe an eight-parter to really go through the trauma of what he's dealing with, and seeing how Saruman could really try and destroy the Shire, but the hobbits rise up and take it back for their own. It would be a very entertaining thing to see. However, I do also understand from the point of view of the filmmakers, one more story, one more ending was maybe just one too many for the Lord of the Rings trilogy. You do have to think how long on the screen it really would have taken them to do this justice, and to add that onto everything we had already watched, you realistically almost need another film after The Return of the King to make that work properly, to give you the proper setup with the proper payoffs later. So although, I will admit, in my heart of hearts I would absolutely love to see the scouring of the Shire adapted for the screen, I can fully understand why Peter Jackson and his team did cut it for their trilogy.
So with that, now it is time for my question of the day, which is, should the scouring of the Shire have been removed from the movies? Were there already too many endings, or would it have been the perfect send off for Frodo on his adventure? Let me know all of your thoughts and opinions on this in the comment section below. And now it's time to shout out our patrons. You guys are the ones letting us make our short film in the background of all things and I cannot thank you all enough for making this happen. Firstly we have our Divine Power tier members of Kevin and Abra, you are both awesome. And a big thanks to our Fire Demon tier members of Nasheath, Denver Steel and Gregory, you are amazing people. And as well I cannot forget the Wizard Staff tier members of John, Andrew and Jennifer. Every single one of you is a true legend of the bro hero. And thank you once again to Audible for sponsoring this video. Finally, if you have managed to reach the very end of this video with me today and you have enjoyed what you've seen, then please hit the subscribe button with the bell icon too for all notifications so that you will know when all future videos go up. Again, do not forget to check out the Hobbit Day playlist. Everyone deserves just a few minutes of your time to check out what they've put up. I really don't think you'll regret it. And so, thank you for spending just some of your time with me today and I will see you next time on The Broken Sword.